We are very excited to see Lee again. Hey Lee, how's it going? Hey friends, I'm hey. really excited to be here too. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, and thanks so much for sharing. Hey, what's hey, up? Pinky? Say hi. Hey. Um, thanks so much for sharing among these many, as we've talked about um, how you are using components of Flux to provide GitOps. So I know we're behind schedule, so let's just go right into it. Thanks, Pinky. Sweet. Yeah. Here, I'll pull up my screen and let's uh, let's look at some cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Great. Hi, friends. Uh, my name is Lee Kapili. I used to work with the wonderful uh, Weave Dev Advocacy uh, team here, and now I work with the Tanzu Advocacy team with VMware. I'm staff developer advocate there. Uh, so uh, I know that we want to bring like a little bit of the executive experience as well as the developer uh, experience. And so I've got both the kind of uh, exec and customer kind of kind of sales pitch in a way, but then I also have our open source stuff. Right. And I have tech demos and I have cool stuff, uh, both a mixture of things that you can uh, go out into our open source ecosystem, see all of the amazing projects uh, that the upstream contributors at VMware Engineering are contributing to, uh, as well as some of the things that you can pay for. Uh, beginning here with our highest level solution in our cloud native portfolio, which is called VMware Tanzu Application Platform. And um, what is exciting to me uh, being somebody who is a, a member and an advocate of the Flux community is that Flux is so well factored. It's so well designed that it just makes sense for a company who's building high level solutions, uh, somebody who's trying to provide a great developer experience to enterprise devs, uh, medium sized companies with something like VMware Tanzu application platform, uh, that it makes sense for us to include parts of Flux directly in our product. Right. And so we are including source controller. Uh, we are including Helm controller because they are some of the best components in the ecosystem, uh, really fantastic software. Uh, and also uh, working on continuing to make upstream contributions. I'm very excited now that Helm controller is supporting OCI artifacts in the most recent release of Flux. I believe it's cut now. Uh, and that we are also continuing to uh, get the OCI support for customizations and arbitrary manifests also back into Flux. And so, you know, these are very important um, kind of basic, uh, or I shouldn't say basic, but they are the necessary core kind of primitive feature set that you need in order to deliver software uh, with high quality. And we are able to pull in some of their tools in order to do that. So I'm showing you the web page now for Tanzu App Platform. You know, go ahead and check this thing out. Uh, basically, we provide a high-level dev experience. It means that on top of Flux, we've pulled in a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Tekton, we have the Carvel tool suite. We have uh, Cap Controller, which is able to deliver things uh, to the cl cluster using the Carvel tool suite inside of it uh, with our packaging mechanisms. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about Tanzu Community Edition, which is a Kubernetes distribution uh, and packaging ecosystem that allows you to have high quality opinions uh, be the basis for your developer platform. And the cool thing is like it kind of moving on and forward from something like Tanzu Application Services, which is based off of Cloud Foundry, it was like very strong and opinionated and served all of the most important use cases for the biggest companies is that now that we can build on open interfaces uh, with Tanzu app platform, you can still bring the, uh, the, we have a service called convention service, right? And so you can still bring the conventions and the opinions that will make your developers successful uh, into your environment from day one. You don't have to build anything brand new. Uh, you can use the conventions that are gonna make sense, but since we have all of these open tools, you can also bring your own opinions. You can also bring your own extensions and start creating those specialized experiences for those high-performing dev teams that have specific infrastructure needs. Uh, and so, you know, uh, Tanzu App Platform, we bring in a bunch of components. We, we can run on a bunch of different platforms. We can pull them all together. You can use Jenkins, you could use TankDog, you can use Paquetto Build Packs, you could use Docker files, whatever you want. Uh, and you can ship things with Carvel or other tools such as JSONet. Um, customize, et cetera. And this allows you to build that experience up and down the stack wherever you need to, to go. And what we do like to suggest uh, is that you would use Tanzu Kubernetes as well underneath. 
Now we're going to work on any Kubernetes platform, uh, but if you want to give uh, Tanzu flavor Kubernetes a try, you can actually go to Tanzu Community Edition IO. We also sell Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, uh, and Tanzu App Platform is the paid solution for high level developer experience on top of Tanzu Kubernetes. But um, if you want to try this stuff out, you can go get Tanzu Community Edition, and you can see that we have all of these individual components already packaged up, right? Like if you want to pull in source controller, you can. If you want to start pulling Knative Serving to do uh, some of those high level uh, developer experience type things, you can. Uh, we've got you know, our uh, image registry here, with, et cetera. And there is this component right here, which is very special. It's called Cartographer. Cartographer is the heart of what lets us glue together a high level developer experience out of a bunch of disparate tools that are not necessarily uh, meant or designed to work with each other. And I'll show you what I mean. So um, inside of Cartographer, uh, we have a DAG builder, right? So now I'm going from like executive pitch to let's talk tech for a second, right? If you want to execute a workflow, you need a graph with a direction, right? So we, we build directive graphs and you can build directed graphs out of Kubernetes objects, any kind of Kubernetes objects. They could be Tekton workflows, they could be KPAC images, they could be Git repositories and notifications and events from Flux. And when you are able to have this kind of choreograph, uh, choreographing kind of orchestrator on top, then it lets you build those pipelines with those arbitrary components, right? So we can take the source output from a Git repo that pulls in via Flux or you know, a Helm chart that gets pulled in. And then we can push that in to say a KPAC build. And then we can take that KPAC build image output and then we can put it into a Knative service that gets applied with cap controller, right? And the, that's very DIY. So what can we do about that? Well, we have this experimental meta package. It's a package of packages that you can get from the TCE repo called Application Toolkit. App Toolkit bundles in a bunch of things, right? So we got Cartographer, it pulls in Cert Manager, we got Contour for Ingress, and then we have Source Controller, Knative Serving, and KPAC. And when you have all of these bits, then we can give you this important object that's part of Cartographer called the supply chain. Right? It lets you build the ability to ship your software. You define a supply chain inside of Kubernetes. You have your Kubernetes native tools that are able to build images, pull source code, and deploy things in a high-level way like Knative. And then you are able to tell that supply chain to create workloads. Right, So you can create standard supply chains, a small number of them, and then deploy thousands of workloads if you want. Right? And so you can like get to hundreds of Knative services in this style of supply chain and a bunch of Java services in this style of supply chain, maintain a relatively small number of pipelines, but a large number of workloads in a pretty standard way. Uh, this is gonna let you build that kind of platform abstraction that so many people are looking for. Um, now, I also wanna talk just a little bit about the strength of our packaging approach. Um, so, you know, we, we've been around the block. Right? I used a lot of Helm, I've used a lot of Customize. There's great things about Helm and there's great things about Customize. Um, and the cool thing about Helm is that it is an amazing ecosystem, right? And if you're using Helm, you can get access to software and deploy it with opinions that you didn't have to come up with yourself. Now, the cool thing about Customize is that it's a very targeted Kubernetes specific tool and it lets you do patching Whereas Helm is kind of more of this like values in direction based approach, right? Uh, very different from each other. What I like about Carvel is that it is a whole ecosystem of how to package with Kubernetes and how to uh, be able to effectively share opinions about complicated software. But it gives you packaging, gives you indirection, it gives you patching, and you can do all of these things with individual tools, many of which are not even Kubernetes specific. For instance, you have a tool that's really good at pulling dependencies, that's called Vendor. You have a tool that's good at patching YAML, it's called YTT. Image package lets you put arbitrary blobs of stuff into container registries, and we can put manifests into registries using that. We have tools that are good at figuring out how to hash and pin container images. 
And you can use those even outside of Kubernetes with tools like Docker Swarm or Mesos or whatever you want. Uh, and so I'm really a fan of this. We even have like an improved version of kubectl so you can like wait and see what's happening with the resources that you applied. And then we put that into a controller called cap controller and we can use all these tools in there. So uh, Carvel is kind of at the heart of all of this and it's what makes our packaging approach work. And um, yeah, you know, go ahead and uh, check out app toolkit, install TCE. Uh, it's tons of community edition. And uh, you can also think about uh, uh, potentially talking to a VMware sales rep about Tanzu app platform. Now, um, no, none of my talks are complete without a live demo. Uh, usually I'm doing my demo for my laptop. Now I'm gonna demo you open source software, right? Stuff that you can use right now. You go to the website, go get TCE, go get app toolkit. That's what I'm demoing. Uh, you see here, I've actually got a choice of doing a couple of different workshops in front of me. Now this thing that I'm using is a paid feature of Tanzu app platform. Right, so this is called Learning Center. And basically it's like you have a browser, you can go to a web page, you click this thing, now people can start workshops. All right, so you can see that I have, I have an environment, I got a terminal, this is a Kubernetes cluster. It's actually a virtual cluster, so it's nice and cheap. Um, right, this is an isolated environment, I'm admin, I can do all kinds of stuff. And there's a bunch of markdown generated HTML, so your, your dev team, your platform teams can you know, write tutorials for people. So I'm going to start this workshop. It's just telling me that, hey, you have that platform uh, installed. I'm in the Tanzu Community Edition cluster right now. And so I can go and create this workload. Tanzu apps workload create. I need a, it's going to be taking a Git repo and a ref. Um, this happens to be a Go application, but I don't have to tell um, the workload anything about what I'm doing. It's actually going to use a Paketo build pack uh, using KPAC. And it creates an image resource inside of the Kubernetes cluster. It's going to go do a software build for me. And it's going to figure out by looking at the code in my repo, oh, you have a Go application. Now it's building my code, right? Now, how did it get my code? Oh, we probably would use Flux for that, right? So there must have been like a, a Git repository that piped into the KPAC image. And then it's probably going to go and deploy it because the high level thing that I'm doing is I'm making a Kubernetes object here that is creating a workload, right? So I just name my workload, I give it my repo, and now it's doing this image build. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, it seems like it's adding a layer here. It's pushing into a registry that's inside of my workshop environment hosted by the cluster. It says, oh, the workload is ready. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess if I get the workload here, Again, this is uh, just Tanzu apps workload get, but it also could just be um, kubectl get workload. And as you can see the similar information right there. This is the supply chain is sourced URL. Okay, well, I have a URL here. So I guess if I click that, hello, Sunshine. Oh, my app is working. So you can see this is the kind of uh, developer experience uh, that people actually want from an application platform, right? No developers trying to be thinking about all of the Hundreds, hundreds of lines of YAML that it takes to actually ship this app. Uh, but I can show you uh, a little bit behind the scenes uh, what's happening in here. And uh, I should have used that other tab. I have to wait for this uh, VS Code editor to load. Here we go. You can see I even got VS Code in here inside of my web page. Anyway, there's a bunch of templates and stuff. This is uh, what your DevOps people would actually write. Um, you can see we can make any Kubernetes object in here. Uh, this is a Knative serving template that's being created. Uh, we have the uh, Flux Git repository here. We have this uh, image template as well. Uh, so this is the KPAC image that was used. And then as far as this uh, supply chain, uh, this is the source to URL. It's done with a label selector. Uh, so just anytime you make a workload that's labeled web, then uh, this gets run. Right. Source, image, the source gets injected into the image. And then we have the deployer. Uh, I can show you a lot more stuff, but honestly, like that's kind of, that's kind of the point. You know, um, this is the ability for us to glue things together with Cartographer uh, and pull in a bunch of other uh, high quality components from the Kubernetes ecosystem on top of really solid, supported, well packaged repo of software. And we are able to use those things and pull together a high level developer experience where you can just be like, Hey, 
Kubernetes, can you deploy my workload? Here is my code. And then it goes and does that. And then that's like a really good opinion to start from, from day one. And if you've got tons of that platform, um, right, kind of even beyond the open source stuff, we can pull in image scanning and a bunch of other policy enforcement stuff and signing and all of the things that you want out of a really secure supply chain that is mature and supporting high level software development lifecycle. Uh, but all the open source stuff is ready, is available for you to play with for free. Uh, go pull it up and uh, check it out. Yeah, uh, that's the pitch, you know, and honestly, uh, it's it's so cool that uh, that Flux is factored so well that we are able to pull in these individual components uh, and, and deliver this. So uh, super stoked to continue to be a member of this community and I love you guys so much. Awesome, thanks so much. And I uh, apologize that we're behind schedule. So thanks for keeping it tight and good. <laughs> we are about like one session behind. Um, so yes, everybody, please ask your questions in the Slack. Um, uh, like I said, uh, there's a little bit of a, a slack delay, but it's so exciting to see the action there. And Lee, I think you need to run to something. So um, if you don't answer right away, then um, we'll have other people, um, we'll, we'll have you answering later. Yeah, for sure. If you could just tag me, tag me in the slack and then uh, I will take a look in after this talk that I'm about to do right now. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got you got another one. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So- Cheers uh, friends. Thank you.